What's the Lions win total over under in Vegas? And I've got an idea for a new Lion wide receiver. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day on this Thursday, March 28th, and a Friday, March 29th. Thanks for checking us out wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen. Thank you to those of you that subscribe and watch each and every day for free on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. If you're new to the program, welcome in wherever you've been. We appreciate you checking us out. Our everydayers that are out there appreciate you as well. Follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Locked On Lions, Matt Dairy Facebook fan page. And as always, as I mentioned before, you can find us on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Our sponsor today is FanDuel. Make every moment more right now with new customers. If you're a new customer, you get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. <clears throat> Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Coming up on the show today. Could a old lion be coming back? This is who I'm proposing the Lions replace Josh Reynolds with. We got opening day in baseball at the end of the show that I have to talk about. A new uniform reveal. Lions are putting on a big show coming up. It's the big show coming up April 18th. And we'll also talk about the Lions win total. All of that today right here on Lockdown Lions. Uh, Thanks to all of you for... uh, Checking us out, again, wherever you get your podcasts. If you missed yesterday's show, uh, Chris Burke was with us from TheAthletic.com, longtime Lions writer who uh, now is a draft editor for The Athletic. Got into some good stuff with Chris Burke. And and I know I mentioned this with Chris yesterday. And just the J.J. McCarthy rumors and the ridiculousness that is out there about McCarthy is unreal. I have friends in Chicago telling me, oh, the Bears Bears might uh, surprise us and take J.J. McCarthy number one. Like, he's really good. No one's arguing what he did in college. But number one? (laughs) Come on. Oh, teams are lining up. They're moving up. I think J.J. McCarthy will end up going in the top five. Do I think he's a top five player in this draft? No. But, like, this is what happens. People want quarterbacks. Teams want quarterbacks. I think the first four picks could end up with a trade being quarterbacks with Daniels and May and Williams and McCarthy. But my goodness, some of the... So today on ESPN, Mike Tannenbaum says, oh yeah, someone's going to move up to two and trade all of these assets. It's like, hold on a second. Um, Anyway, Chris Burke on the draft, if you missed it yesterday. All right, so out in Vegas, odds are out now. You can place wagers, that including includes our friends at FanDuel, for over-under win totals for this coming season. All right now, you got to figure that the teams that were really good last year are going to continue to be at the top of this list. But I was a little bit surprised that the Lions' win total um, was uh, e- equal to some other teams that I think that I, I scratch. I was it was a giant head scratcher for me. So let's just give you this. First and foremost, Kansas City Chiefs over under for wins eleven and a half. Ray, uh, 49ers, 11 and a half. Baltimore Ravens, Noah Taluki's Baltimore Ravens, 11 and a half. So Chiefs, Niners, Ravens, 11 and a half. You going over, you going under, whatever. At 10 and a half, checking in at 10 and a half, your Detroit Lions. That's awesome. Except, uh oh, also at 10 and a half, the Green Bay Packers. The Philadelphia Eagles, the Miami Dolphins, the Buffalo Bills, the Dallas Cowboys, the Bengals, and, wait a minute, the Bengals, and the Atlanta Falcons, 10 and a half. That surprises me. I know Atlanta got Kirk Cousins. I know people are bullish on what the Falcons are doing. They got uh, Raheem Morris now, but like, um, as their head coach, they got rid of Arthur Smith, as we know, but 
How about that? Let's focus first on Detroit. Last year, if you recall, the Lions over under for win total was nine and a half. And you took the over. Obviously, you did quite well as the Lions finished 12 and five. Now their number and their, their win total goes up uh, uh, an entire win from last year to this year. Now, remember, a couple of things in play here. Number one, uh, 12 wins would be a ton, a lot to bank on once again. Do the Lions feel like they're a better team right now than they were a year ago? Of course they do. Uh, they've added DJ Reader. They've added Carlton Davis. Uh, they still have to draft. Lions fans have to feel good about really the one guy that they've lost in free agency um, was Josh Reynolds. That's really it. You, know, you got plenty of, 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 of Lion free agents that still haven't signed anywhere yet. Jonah Jackson left for the Rams. That's another one. But Kevin Zeitler is here. I think the Lions feel like their offensive line is um, – maybe better than it was a year ago going into the start of the season. But it doesn't surprise me that the Chiefs and Niners were Super Bowl teams last year at 11 and a half. So Detroit at 10 and a half feels right to me. If I had to sit here right now and tell you on March 28th, if I had to put down some money on over or under 10 and a half, based on this year's schedule, you know, it fluctuates for me. I'm looking up going, Lions might be a better team this year but finish 10 and 7. You know, there's no there's no more gimmies in this division. And I know last year Detroit, what, swept Minnesota, um, split with the Bears, and split with uh, the Packers. Green Bay, of course, is going to be a lot better. They're right up there at 10 and a half as well with the Lions from Vegas. And Vegas knows, right? Um, the Vikings right now for over under are... Six and a half, because again, no one knows who their quarterback is going to be. Is it going to be Sam Darnold or whomever they draft? Um, saw a mock draft the other day that said Bo Nix was going to be in Minnesota. And then the Bears over under is eight and a half, which is evil, even with teams like the Colts, Rams, Jaguars, Chargers, Browns, and Steelers. Uh, I, I, I would not, I would bet the under on that. I know the Bears went eight and nine last year. I still, I'm still not a believer. Um, but the Lions sitting at ten and a half is about right. Oh man, that's a tough one because I think the schedule's murder. The Lions, look, the Lions are playing a first place schedule. The schedule is very, very difficult, and you know the Lions are going to be on prime time a ton. Uh, you know they got to play Baltimore again. They got to go to San Francisco. They got to go to Dallas again. Uh, Buffalo is likely going to be your Thanksgiving uh, game. There's no gimmies on this schedule like last year. Last year you had Carolina at home, Atlanta at home. There were some there were some gimmies here. The Chargers who were abysmal last year, the Raiders at home with Josh McDaniels. Everybody knew going down to that Monday night game, the Lions weren't losing that game. Lions didn't even play well that night and still won that game. So ten and a half. It's a tough call. It's right. It's the perfect number for Detroit because they won 12 last year. Schedule's going to be a little more difficult. It's going to be right around 10, 11, in my opinion. So it's right on there. Um, lowest number of wins um, New England, four and a half, and Carolina, four and a half. That's the low point. Denver at five and a half. But Detroit at 10 and a half. I just, just Atlanta's high for me. I think 10 and a half is high. And the Bengals, too. That's a tough division that they're in. And I know Joe Burrow, they'll have for a full season and everything else. Um, the Jets at nine and a half. God, that's high, too. I, and I know Aaron Rodgers is going to be back. But Houston, nine and a half. Wouldn't you take Houston over nine and a half? And wouldn't you take Jets under nine and a half? I would. Those are the numbers from our friends in Vegas. All right, Lions have plans for their new uniforms. Fans will eat this up with a spoon. Uh, so we will get into that coming up next right here on a Thursday Locked on Lions. But first, let's tell you about our friends at game time. If you're looking for opening day tickets for next Friday at Comerica Park, when the Tigers take on the A's, the 1-0 Detroit Tigers, by the way, 
um, you can get them on, ga on the Game Time app. All right, you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets for your next big event, whether it's opening day in sports, whether it's music, comedy, theater events near you. You can get them on the Game Time app. They got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, which I love, and their best priced guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. What are some things you like about the Game Time app experience? They asked me, I'll tell you. View from your seat, All right? It's the best. You can browse through anything and then what, wherever you are, you click on the section and, and, the, and the seat and you, and you scroll right and left and you see exactly where you are. It is fantastic. I buy tickets on Game Time all of the time. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Matt Derry back with you, Locked On Lions, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks to uh, Scotty Questions and the folks at Questionable Tees for my uh, Lions hoodie. Um, check out their stuff. Questionable Tees does a great job. Uh, and they got all your Red Wings stuff, too. Um, Scotty's big wings guy. All right. So the announcement came out today on the social medias of the Detroit Lions with a little video. Uniform reveal coming up April 18th. So we are a few weeks away from the Lions unveiling their new uniforms. As uh, 222 Rod Wood told us this past week at the owners' meetings, um, they were going to do it before the draft, and indeed they are a week before the draft. Uh, as far as what the Lions' new uniforms are going to look like, Mr. Wood did say, quote, they're honoring our traditional colors with a little updating and twist. Ooh, a twist. It gives us a lot more options, too. We're going to introduce a couple different per, uh, pant options that go with jerseys. So it will give us a different options to wear during the season. All right. I know I'm about to sound like old guy. I'd like to see some black in the uniform, maybe something. But I don't need black uniforms. All right. I, I hope the Lions stick with their colors. They are Honolulu, blue, and silver. The gray color rush were fine with me. I like the, 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 the old school throwbacks that the Lions have sometimes worn. I think those are great. But I hope they're not unveiling some black uniform. Because that's not the Lions to me. When they when they wore the black uniforms with Kitna and Calvin Johnson back in the day, I thought they were hideous. Um, so the Lions did send out invitations to all you Lions loyal members today that you can attend the uniform new uniform reveal on Thursday night, April 18th. Uh, you can purchase up to two total tickets, and reservations will be accepted up until April 12th. So the program starts at Ford Field at 7 o'clock. Doors open at 6. I don't know. I mean, I'm so excited for the season that this, the uniforms, I don't know, as long as, like they're talking about different pant options, I love when the Lions go with the all blues or the all whites. Maybe I'm just in the... I think, I think the majority agree with me. When they wear their all-whites on the road or their all-blues at home, that was like good luck. They won two playoff games this past year in the all-blues. Does it need a bit of a refresh and retouch up? Yes, it does. Absolutely it does. But I'm voting to stay away from the black uniforms. Um, you want to have some sort of black stripe or maybe accent in there? I have no issue with that. Um Color rush grays were meh to me. I like the all whites and the all blues. So we'll see where they go with it. But the one thing that I love about the Lions, and they do have a great tradition, and I know, look, it hasn't been a great tradition of winning or anything else. But um, I do like some of the old school throwbacks. I've seen the people call, call in for the old Greg Landry Tiger Stadium uniforms with the stripes on the shoulders. I've seen a lot of different... Um, looks but to me i just want them to win and i want you the fans to enjoy the product and i want them to win the division again i want them to stick it to brian gutekunst whatever his name is the packers gm uh i want to beat the bears you know again 
if Caleb Williams is on Chicago and everybody, you know what's going to happen on draft night. This Bears team is going to be so good. I want the Lions to crush them. I don't care what uniforms they're wearing. But it is cool that the Lions are involving the fans and they're having a reveal sort of party. So for more on that, if you're a Lions loyalty member and you got um, an email about it, or get more information, I'm sure, at DetroitLions.com. If you want to become a Lions season ticket holder or a loyal member, I, I think there's this gigantic 20,000 people waiting list. It's amazing. It's incredible. Um, just the excitement that is surrounding this team. As we mentioned yesterday, Josh Reynolds is going to the Denver Broncos on a two-year, $14 million deal, according to Adam Schefter. Those are the numbers. Now, Dave Burkett at the Free Press, we didn't have this on yesterday's show, um, but Burkett wrote at the Freep last night that the Lions, quote-unquote, low-balled Reynolds and that he didn't get anywhere near that kind of offer from Detroit. I told you guys for weeks that the Lions were not offering him multiple years. I think the Lions feel like they can upgrade at receiver, especially in the draft, and they loved him as a person, but I don't think they were going any higher than a one-year deal with him. He's getting $7 million a year from the Broncos in multiple years. He's 29 years of age, really good player. I think Josh Reynolds is a really good player. But I think the Lions feel like they can upgrade there. Um, and we're never offering, according to Burkett, and Dave's really good, in the free press, uh, the Lions weren't going anywhere near $7 million. It didn't sound like they were offering anything more than a one-year deal. And that's what the Lions have been doing in free agency. You know, Carlton Davis is on a one-year deal. DJ Reader's on a two-year deal. Marcus Davenport's on a one-year deal. Kevin Zeitler's on a one-year deal. Uh, Kaminsky played on a one-year deal a couple of years ago. So did Charles Harris. Uh, Anzalone's first contract with the team was a one-year deal. Um, that's not what, where I think the Lions... I think the Lions were going at one year, maybe four million, and Reynolds got two at seven uh, per year. So interesting that they went that direction. Now, with that being said, the Lions receiving room right now could use another body. All right? The legendary Tom Kennedy, Maurice Alexander, Antoine Green, DPJ, to go along with Amon Ross St. Brown, um, uh, Jameson Williams, and Kali Freeman, you got to figure there's another addition happening. I've got a solution. I've got an idea. We know the Lions love speed. We know the Lions now are going to be thinking very heavily about their kick return game because now with this new kick return rule, you get you get past that first wave, there's going to be more kickoff returns. And I'm throwing it out there that you can get on a cheap one-year deal, Jamal Agnew, the former Lion who spent four seasons in Detroit, 17 through 20. He's the last Lion to return a kickoff for a touchdown, is still a free agent. Still available after his contract has run out with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, remember last year, Agnew broke his leg at the end of last season. So he's probably not going to be 100% and ready to roll right away in training camp. It's possible. But why not a reunion with good old number 39, Jamal Agnew? I would love that. I still think the Lions will draft an outside receiver, a, a, a Leggett type or whomever, kid from South Carolina, um, and add to their receiver room. I also think this means more opportunities for Jamison Williams, certainly. They love Khalif Raymond, who's back. Uh, Antoine Green will get more opportunities. He was drafted, DPJ, et cetera. But you want to add another guy with speed and a good route runner, good in the locker room, Jamal Agnew, former Lion, uh, is available. There's another former Lion that's out there in DJ Chark, but his game really went downhill last year. Um, and look. Uh, Cordero Patterson just signed a two-year deal with the Steelers, and he's going to be Pittsburgh's return man. So teams now are thinking about the kick return game a little bit more than they have in previous years. And as it's been documented, last year's Super Bowl, what, we had 11 kickoffs or something, and 10 of them were through the back of the end zone. So we're going to get more action on the kickoffs, which I'm all for. I think kickoffs over the last couple of years have just been useless. It's been a useless play. Just kick the ball back in the end zone, and it's a waste of time. Uh, all right, coming up next, uh, you want to know why the NFL is – I do this bit like once a month. Why the NFL is king. Why the NFL gets it right all of the time. Uh, it has to do with Christmas Day and today. 
And uh, I will bring that up coming up next right here on Locked On Lions. Locked On Lions, as I mentioned today, brought to you by FanDuel. We got March Madness back tonight with the Sweet 16 games. Two nights of Sweet 16s, Thursdays and Fridays. That means say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed going down or whatever it is. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. It's all there for you at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. So I saw this um, yesterday on uh, social media. The NFL has decided that the NFL had thought last year that they were not going to have any day, have any games on Christmas Day because it was a Wednesday. The NFL said, no, probably take a year off from Christmas Day games or whatever. They had Christmas, Christmas like triple header this past year. And a lot of basketball fans, especially NBA fans, complained. And other fans complained about football on Christmas Day. Because let's be honest, if you're really super religious or you're really super into Christmas and you sort of like basketball, you'll check out some of the NBA games. There's usually like five games, a noon, a 2.30, a 5, an 8.30, and a 10.30, whatever. The NFL now says they are going to play two games on a Wednesday, Christmas Day doubleheader for the NFL. Now, for me, that screws the schedule up immensely for four teams. And I don't love that. Playing football on a Wednesday, you know, I'm assuming that the teams that are going to play on a Wednesday are going to either have a bye the week before or they're going to be playing on Thursday the week before. Because you can't play Sunday and then play again on Wednesday. That's impossible. So they're going to have to fidget the schedule, finagle the schedule, however they do it. Um, That's number one. But number two, The NFL can do this because the NFL can do whatever they want. Whether the NBA likes it or doesn't, whether the old school fan says, oh man, Christmas Day is for basketball in the NBA. The NFL is jumping all over this because the NFL knows they're going to own all the TV sets, the laptops, everything else, the phones, when it comes to that day. And that leads me to my point about today. Today is baseball opening day. All right, now, two things about that. Number one, Baseball had a soft opening last week when they had the Dodgers and Padres playing in two games in Korea and didn't tell anybody that the games were on. Literally, I, I was getting up to go to the gym at 6.30 in the morning. I get to the gym and the Dodger game's on. Otani's first game as a Dodger, and nobody saw it. Nobody saw it because we're all sleeping or going to work or going to the gym like I was. Just stupid. But that's Rob Manfred and MLB. They don't know what they're doing. Today was opening day. It's a Thursday, a little weird, but opening day. So today at like one o'clock, I turned on my TV because I know I'm going to get, uh, I got the extra innings package and I'm going to watch some games. There wasn't a game on, not one. couple of rainouts and every other game was at 410 Eastern time. Tigers played the White Sox. They won today, won nothing. The White Sox might lose 110 games, by the way. Um, they're horrible. And, uh, the Tiger game was on with every other game at 4:10. Why didn't you have a game on at noon? What the Reds used to be always opening day. The first game was the Reds. Put the Reds on at noon. How about have a game at one? Have a game at two. Have some games at four. My Guardians play tonight at 10:07. All right, I'll be up. But like, you put all you have opening day today, and you put all the games at the same time at 4:10. That's just dumb. And and they just don't promote the product at all. Like the Angels are playing the Orioles, put that game on at one, and then everybody could watch Mike Trout. But ESPN, according to reports, is trying to even get out of their MLB contract. It's sad. Baseball is such a great game, and I love baseball. I do. But, you know, the NFL has lapped them four times in terms of exposure, in terms of promotion. You know, what the NFL does with the draft, what the NFL does with free agency day and schedule release day and everything that they do, that they do it's pretty darn good. It's pretty smart. And folks yearn for football. They do. They love it. So 
just want to get that uh, off my chest here. And uh, look, the Tigers won, and you know, it was like Jason Benetti Day on Twitter. But the um, bottom line is, the NFL just does it right. And whether you are upset or not that they're going to play games on Christmas Day, they're going to play the games. We're all going to end up watching them, and their ratings are going to triple what the NBA does. So. All right, we are back with a Friday edition of Locked On Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Again, if you missed yesterday's show with Chris Burke, he was awesome. Uh, Miss Chris on the uh, Lions beat, although Colton Pouncey does a great job for the athletic.com. But Chris really knows his stuff when it came to comes to the draft and uh, has been working really closely with Dane Brugler, the athletics draft expert, to get his draft book out. And we'll hopefully get Dane on the, uh, on the show. We have Adam Schefter. In a couple of weeks on the show uh, as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. I believe that'll be on April the 8th. So uh, thanks for making us your first listen, everybody. And we will talk to you again tomorrow for a Friday Locked Online.